Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. welcome back, and in today's video, I would like to talk about hand cannons on console, 140s versus 150s versus 180s versus 110s. I've played a little bit on PC, and there will be some PC comparison footage because it's needed. It's here to show what you need to do and what you need on console hand cannons. The whole video is centered around console. I'm going to be going over a number of things in this video, stay with me on this one, I feel that there's a lot to be learned. I'm going to explain range, bloom, recoil, PC versus console, it's a genuine attempt to help. We're also going to be going over some of the in-game mechanics to range, and I wanted to make this video ever since the 140 and 150 RPM hand cannon tip video I made about three months ago. A lot of console players said that those tips helped, and there's a link down below and a card on screen if you would like to check it out, but in this video we're going to talk about what the best hand cannons are in class, the perks that they have, the best ways to utilize them, but I also want to show what you're getting yourself into choosing one RPM over another, because you hear a lot of things in Destiny, this one's the best, that one's the best. You need to know that console is a different world and it needs to be treated as such. Weapons work differently on console than on PC, and you need to consider why that is, and we're going to uncover why. Where one RPM is great on console, it's not so good on PC, and vice versa. I'm a hand cannon PvP player, they are my number one used piece of gear in the Crucible, and you can see with my top 5 in both energy and kinetic, Ace is at the top, Sparrow Rations is on that list, The Last Word, Killed Orchid, Luna, I have some experience with them. Again, we're going to be talking about a lot in this video, so I hope you stick around PC versus console, how hand cannons act, what matters on a hand cannon for console, and a whole lot more. All of it ties together. They are different, PC and console, and maybe one day that'll get changed, hopefully it will be. It's no secret console plays different than PC, with controller you get aim assist, and since you get aim assist, you get a lot more bloom. With a mouse, you're more precise, you don't get that kind of aim assist, and you get less bloom. PC recoil is a lot less as well. There is recoil on PC, but not as severe as console. Since I do have a PC now, I have a controller and a mouse plugged in currently on what we're getting ready to watch. When I'm using a mouse versus a controller, and I'll put it on the screen. You're going to be able to tell by the reticle how it acts when the input is recognized. We talked about it in that 140-150 tip video. That X inside is your accuracy cone when you shoot. Your bloom. PC has it, but it's very, very minimal compared to console. In hip fire with a mouse, you're extremely accurate, very tight grouping, and it's fairly easy to control. With a controller, that X blooms out. That's the bloom in motion. When that X gets outside the circle, that bullet can go anywhere within the circle. So think about distances. Just outside of your effective range, this is what your accuracy cone is looking like trying to hit your target. This is important to know. And when you're aimed down sights with a mouse, very, very tight grouping. Sparrow Ration's recoil direction is very vertical, easy to land shots. Not only are the shots easier to land, but they actually have less bloom to actually land the shot. With a controller, you have more recoil, and as you're firing, you get out to max bloom. Important again because the further you are away, the wider that accuracy cone is getting because of the bloom. With your first shot accuracy with a mouse, it's always pretty much right on point. You can land way deep shots reliably. Sure, they're going to miss every now and then because the accuracy cone does move out. We'll talk about that accuracy cone in a moment. But all of this is important as we start getting into our hand cannons on console. What to take away is that with a controller, recoil and bloom are your enemy and range is going to be your friend. Back in Destiny 1, we got an explanation as to how the range stat works, and it's been true since. Range is visualized as a cone that radiates out of the barrel of your weapon. The better the range, the further that cone goes out, and the narrower that cone is. So on screen, I have a visual representation, and it's exaggerated, of what that means. So let's take a look at what would be an Ace of Spades at the top with a high range stat of 86. On the bottom, let's say a spare rations with its stock range of 38. The bigger the range stat, the further that accuracy cone goes out, the more precise the shots are going to be within that cone. And since it's going further, as they said, it's narrower getting there. With a shorter range stat, let's look at the bottom one now, the cone doesn't travel that far and widens more quickly. We'll get into our next part, initial accuracy, and things are going to start making sense. Your initial accuracy is your first shot. Within range, the cone is narrow on your first shot. At the very end of your drop-off range, the cone is a little bit widened because you're on the edge of drop-off, and it goes a little bit beyond that. So taking shots that are really far away are going to have severe damage drop-off, but you're going to be working within this accuracy cone. That's why when you're outside of a range, aiming for the head, the shot can actually just miss or hit the body instead of the very precise point that you're aiming. It's because you're at the end of the accuracy cone, the widened part of it, and that bullet can go anywhere within that widened cone. So this is your first shot. Visualize that cone in your mind. At the end of it, it widens out. 
The second part after your initial accuracy is you start firing a second, third, and fourth shot. When you're doing that, the cone starts to bloom out and widen even more, and that's what we're seeing in hip fire. That cone blooming out. And when you're aiming down sights, there is an aim down sights accuracy cone, and that cone is clamped a bit. It's not as severe as this, and that makes you more accurate than hip fire. So as you spam a hand cannon on console, the whole cone is getting wider, and it gets really wide outside of your effective range. So the more range that you have, the further that accuracy cone goes out, the cone gets narrower, and it gets longer, resulting in more accurate shots. They've gone on record saying that when something like a sight or a barrel gives aim assist, that portion is tied within the range stat somehow. So let's get back to looking at PC. The accuracy cone blooms when you fire, but very minimally. Even after your first shot accuracy, this means that since a mouse is precise, the bloom is lessened, that even if you're way outside the effective range, the cone is still fairly tight. Players on PC can still land those shots, and they can land them better than a console player. Because at a certain point for console, outside of your effective range stat, you're losing aim assist, you're losing all of these things. PC doesn't have that. Bungie has their secret sauce that goes into a gunfight, and there's things that we're never going to know. But one thing that we do know is this. The bigger the range, the more shots landed, period and that ties into every single weapon. And with the cone, with what we just talked about, we will reference this later on. On the screen right now, we have the TTKs of all the hand cannon archetypes, so we'll keep these up. The 110s, your hard hitting ones, are two crit one body for a 1.07 TTK. It has 91 to the head and 50 to the body. The 140s require three crits for 0.87. They do 70 to the head and 47 to the body. The 150s are three crit as well, 0.8 time to kill. They do 68 to the head and 43 to the body. The 180 RPM precision frames are 2 crit, 2 body for a flat 1 second time to kill. They do 57 to the head and 39 to the body. I'm going to start off by saying that I like all hand cannon archetypes for console because they all have a place, they all have different things you can do with them. Let's start off with 180 RPM, 2 head, 2 body, the truss, the service revolver. These do not follow the same rules as a 140, 150, or 110. Back when Luna and Not Forgotten got their RPM change, I said that they're still going to be some of the best weapons for console, and they are. They're not as potent, but they don't suffer massive bloom, recoil. They're 150 RPM precision frames, easy recoil, little to no bloom, and those precision frames have little to no bloom and are even accurate from the air. They just don't follow the same rules. And you would think that two head, two body with a one second TTK is slow, it's bad, but there's a lot that goes into play with those. Stay with me on this, I'm going to break down as to why a one second time to kill hand cannon actually competes. I'm going to bring up a video I did a while back on how flinch works in Destiny 2. Basically, whenever your reticle is off of your target, close to the critical spot, when you get shot, flinch will throw your reticle on the crit spot. You could be aiming top left, and it's going to throw you bottom right to the head. And on the flip side of that, when you're aiming directly on the critical spot and get shot, flinch throws you off of the crit spot. So the rules to remember is whenever your crosshair is off of the critical spot, flinch throws you on it. And whenever your crosshair is on the critical spot and get shot, flinch throws you off of it. So with two head and two body, you can literally start every engagement shooting at the abdomen if you wanted to, because as soon as you take fire, that second shot is going to be on the critical spot. And that has nothing to do with aiming there, because flinch throws you on. So that's the first thing. Number one, it's relaxed. Other archetypes like a 140 or 150 requires three crits, 100% accuracy. These 180s don't. Number two, since they aren't following the same rules as the others as far as extreme recoil and bloom, follow-up shots are a lot easier, night and day easier. And number three, Destiny has always valued successive shots to apply flinch. That's why the doctrine of passing in Destiny 1 was such a terror bullet hose. It flinched you all over the place. Because it isn't necessarily by caliber of round. You would think a hard-hitting hand cannon is going to flinch you more than, let's say, an auto rifle or a bygones. But since it shoots so quick and the shots are on you so fast, that's what's applying the flinch. So with, like, a Trust 180, you apply a great amount of flinch. And then when you add on something like explosive rounds that adds a flinch multiplier, you flinch them even more. So all in all, you have little recoil, little to no bloom, a relaxed time to kill, you apply flinch. And at one second, these are the reasons why they're competitive on console. Meanwhile, other hand cannons are having to have 100% accuracy, they have bloom, they have recoil. Your two main options are the Kinetic Service Revolver and the Energy Truss. For both of these, I do recommend high range. You can add a tad bit of stability, but the frame itself, the precision frame, takes care of all that for you. It's low recoil. You want to extend out your damage drop-off. For Trust, I have 275 max range Truss. That's full bore, accurized rounds, and a range of masterwork. For Truss, for the Crucible, I recommend Explosive Payload for the reasons I went over earlier. Those rounds really flinch your target. Good perk combos are going to be anything with explosive rounds. Another one's going to be Dragonfly Rampage, we've covered this before. Or Opening Shot paired with anything, really. And I'm not really going to go in-depth with the perks. This video isn't about that, it's just to talk about overall 
what each hand cannon is doing and how to capitalize on it. For the service revolver, same things, has a good amount of range. The best role for PvP is going to be rapid hit kill clip. That can simulate the old 3 tap from Luna for a 0.67 time to kill. As far as the mod for the 180s, I put it on all my trusts, my Luna, backup mag. You can do what you like, but with 9 rounds you can't get too much done. It's a 4 bullet kill in the first place, so if you miss a shot or two, you can't take on two opponents or just generally have rounds readily available. You can add hand cannon targeting instead of a target adjuster and so on. You don't need Icarus because these are accurate from the air. Backup mag is probably the most solid choice. And in conclusion for these, they're a top option for console. They break the rules of how hand cannons work, they're competitive, and if you like them and do well with them, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Moving on to the 110s, the other extreme, slowest, hardest hitting because of their fire rate. The Bloom is less, they play by a little bit different roles as well. The 110s have high inherent range, they hit like a truck with 91 damage and when you break it down like that, that's almost half of your enemy's health. You can spam these in BOK -okay for the most part on console, and if you take an extra split second to fire each shot in between, you're going to get pretty much 100% initial accuracy and that's always good. These do have a place, it's a great peak shot hand cannon, it's a great team shot hand cannon. When it comes to 110s outside of the Storm and Drain combo, there are really only two options. The Kinetic Duke MK44 and the Energy Thin Line. The Thin Line is the only randomly rolled 110 currently. The Duke is the best 110 out of them all. It has the best range to ability handling reload. The best range stat of 68 is actually the highest base range of any legendary hand cannon. There are other 110s such as the Kremel's Dagger from Iron Banner and I'm going to be honest with you here. Everything that Kremel does, the Duke does better. Everything. And the Kremel has a starting mag of 7. You can't do anything with that. It's the same reason why having trust with 9 and adding backup mag is so important. The only thing Kremel has is Snapshot. It's the only thing that it has over the Duke. If you get a nice criminal with snapshot, let's say opening shot, that would work. But 9 times out of 10, the Duke just does everything better. Stats, perk pool, everything. So for Duke, you want rapid hit in the first node and rampage in the second node. Kill clip works, but here's why you want rampage. A 1 stack brings the damage to 100, resulting in 2 taps. That way, you can get a cleanup, not have to reload, and 2 tap the next person. You throw on a rampage spec, that duration goes to 4.5 seconds, it's similar to kill clip at that point, as far as duration. And you can keep going, you don't have to stop, you don't have to reload or do anything like that. The energy thin line does have some really good rolls, but it's really hard to get. And what sets it apart from not only it being energy, but everything else, is that it can roll quick draw. You can do quick draw opening shot, quick draw rampage, it's very very good. The 110s have a place, and true story, when every season starts and I'm grinding to 2100 in comp, I use Monarch Duke with the Oath Keepers on my Hunter. If you watched comp help last weekend with Fallout, the account that I was on had all of this and I pulled it from the vault and that's what I was using. In a comp setting, first off, the Monarch always does poison damage with the Oath Keepers, and secondly, you have easy cleanups with the Duke, then you can start 2 tapping. It's very fun, and with whatever weapon you're using in that Monarch Duke combo, they do high damage. And in conclusion, for the 110s, it has a 1.07 TTK. They're best used as a cleanup to Rampage 2 tap. They're also really good as a cleanup from, let's say, a bow or a sniper. Switch to them with opening shot, get the cleanup. They're also really good at peak shooting, but they're kind of limited in a pure 1v1 duel out in the open. Sometimes you can come out on top, but they're best going to be utilized as what we talked about earlier. The cleanup 2 tap, the peak shot, things like that. All we have left is the 140s and 150s, and this is where the controversy begins. But I'm going to be explaining myself, and there are some things that you should know. And I'll explain my side, because I like 140s over 150s on console. Ostringer over Spare Rations, Ace over Thorn, Kindled Orchid over Waking Vigil. The 140s have inherently more range. This goes all the way back to the beginning of the video, talking about range, talking about Bloom, the Accuracy Cone. Even though they're different RPMs, they're extremely close as to how the range stat affects damage drop-off. In this example, the Kinetic 150 Spare Rations has 48 range, the Kindled Orchid and Energy has 47 range. Know that the hand cannon falloff with whatever hand cannon you're using is extreme and sudden. So let's say your max distance is 27 meters in which you do max damage, you back a meter, that 70 from the Kindled Orchid would go to a 68. Take a couple steps back, it would go to 62. It's very sudden and severe. And as we're going through this, remember what the accuracy cone is doing outside of fall off range. The spare rations with a range of 48 right here does 68 to the head, just outside of its range stat. It has a little drop off. We pull out the kindled orchid at the same exact range, its range stat is at 47, one less, it's still hitting 70, which is its max damage, but we take a couple small steps back, we then hit fall off. So these two RPMs are very, very close as far as the range stat. But what you need to consider, you see players talk about, let's take the Waking Vigil or Spare Rations. The Waking Vigil's base range is 37, guys. Spare Rations is at 38. For these to work on console, you need the range. You need Acarized or Ricochet with Full Bore or Hammer Forged. 
take a look at the spare rations. Again, base range of 38. It has hammer forged on it for plus 10 range. That makes the stat 48. That's getting big, big help. And just outside of its range, 30-ish meters, you could be aiming at the head and the cone is wide enough at fall off, your shots can literally miss or hit the body. And that's with the help of a plus 10 stat. So 38 to 48, it's getting help at plus 10. The Ostringer has a base range of 51 without anything on it. So the spare rations with plus 10 getting help isn't even reaching the base range of Ostringer. So again, you look on paper, you see, well, the 150s have a TTK of 0.8, the 140s have a TTK of 0.87. Let's go ahead and circle that one. This is obviously the winner. And you need to remember at max fire rate, you're gonna hit 0.8 with a 150. But keep in mind with what we talked about with range and bloom, how all of it's working. 0.8 doesn't mean anything when your shots are blooming out and they miss. And a 150 shoots faster than 140, therefore you get to max bloom quicker. Now let's bring back compared to a mouse outside of the effective range, just tap, tap, tapping its way. Good follow up shots. But on console, for the 150s to do well for you, you need to have full bore or small bore paired with accurized and arranged masterwork. You need the range. When you look at PC gameplay and with what players are saying, this is the best hand cannon or that's the best hand cannon, remember that on console you have more recoil, you have more bloom. The 150s fire faster, they get out that bloom quicker. At the end of your effective range, that cone is wide, you start losing aim assist, you start becoming really inaccurate. In this example, I fire shots to get my bloom up and then move on to my target. Keep in mind, this is literally the same exact spare rations. So console players look at some sweet, sweet gameplay of spare rations and expect this. But they get this. I'm gonna keep elaborating how crucial bloom accuracy, the accuracy cone is, guys. I need you to realize how important they are for console. And through all my testing, you generally, between archetype and RPMs, you don't really compare range stats, but these are extremely close. My 140 RPM Ostringer doesn't even have a middle tree range perk, and it hits at 69 range. It also has range finder. The Ostringer with full ranged perks can get to 80 plus range, 81 or so. To me on console, weapons like Ace, and that's actually reflected in my in-game time, with its massive 86 range stat plus Memento Mori is more reliable, more crispy as they say. Bigger range stat equals better fall off, equals more shots landed, equals more accuracy, equals more gunfights won, period. And that isn't to say that 150s can't be great on console, because they can be. If on console, you need to get the range perks. It also has to do with what map that you're on. The 140s are highlighted by two weapons, the Ostringer and the Ace of Spades, both able to get a very high range stat, and on console, that's of the utmost importance. The Ostringer has the best range of 51, highest out of any hand cannon outside of a 110. It has the best base stability of 63, and that's better than any hand cannon that's not a 180. So even if you take a full bore plus 15 range stat, but also has the massive penalty of negative 10 stability, the new stability stat of 53 is still better than over 70% of the hand cannons in the game. The Ostringer is a statistical monster. So you do want full bore extended barrel, small bore, or hammer forged rifling paired with a range masterwork with accurized rounds. For the perks, you want Eye of the Storm paired with Rangefinder or Rampage. I prefer Rangefinder. Eye of the Storm is huge and it's a must. We went over it in its review. Eye of the Storm literally lessens bloom as your health gets lower. It gets your accuracy cone tight. And when you take a look at the reticle of Eye of the Storm on console, it kind of looks like the base PC reticle a little bit. Since it has high range, you're more accurate. It has 70 to the head. So even right here, I'm able to spam it as fast as I can. I land four straight headshots, pass its intended range, doing 50 or so a shot. And when push comes to shove, guys, when things like 3v3 elimination comes back, you aren't worried about rampage, you aren't worried about kill clip. You want to win your duels. Just in a game today, outside of my effective range versus another hand cannon user on console, we take our shots, I take my first shot, and then I spam my final three. I land all these shots, and, and after I shoot my second shot, they have me in red health. I the Storm's in play now. My accuracy cone is very, very tight. I just keep spamming it. I land my final two, and they miss. That's what matters in elimination, winning your duels, winning your ones, and that's why I'm very firm on a max range Ostringer with I the Storm and range finder. The other 140 is going to be Ace of Spades. I could talk about this one for hours, but I'm not, and I won't. Don't worry. One of the highest range hand cannons in the game. You add on Memento Mori, you get more damage per shot. That extends your effective range. It also has high Kyles to flinch. It's, a, it's an extremely solid option. My personal favorite hand cannon in the game, and it's a 140. I would take Ace, Ostringer, Last Word over most hand cannons in the game on console. The 150s have some variety, the Sunshot's getting a magazine buff, and with its catalyst, it could be pretty good. And if the Thorn gets the range catalyst like everyone thinks, it could be one of the best hand cannons in the entire game. That includes console. If it gets a range stat of 70 or above, things are going to be looking really good for it. But on console, you're still going to have to deal with this recoil. 
but console wise that leaves us with spare rations and waking vigil as your best options for the 150s spare rations is the better hand cannon for console though it, first off waking vigil it has sights it doesn't have barrel options if you get the big three sure shot ricochet rounds and that also gives you a tad bit of a zoom factor and a range masterwork you're sitting in a whopping 62 range stat you then want opening shot and slide shot you need absolute perfect rng and you need to luck into that but even then remember it shoots faster, gets bloom out quicker, its range stat isn't even that high. Spare rations as a 100 recoil direction stat is very vertical. You want the big range perks, that's going to be the theme for console. If you get all the big range perks, it gets you to 68 range. That's really good for a 150 on console. On this one, snapshot rangefinder or rapid hit multi-kill clip. And again, we won't get into perks too too much. For the mod, Icarus is good if you jump a lot. Target adjuster is going to be a safe option. These have the magazine, so you don't really need a backup mag. In conclusion, range is a huge deal for console, and that's what I wanted to convey. The 140s have higher inherent range than the 150s. They shoot a tad bit slower, but Bloom doesn't get out to max Bloom as fast. They have a 0.07 TTK difference, and they're going to be better at range than the 150s. For the 150s to work, you need to fully spec them for range, because some of their starting ranges are like at 35, 36, 38. When they start off that low and you don't add those big range stats, you get things like we showed earlier. The 110s have huge chunk damage and can two-tap with Rampage. You can throw on opening shot for snipe cleanups, or in a team shot scenario, they do really, really well to drop big damage shots at a distance. The 180s are basically big precision sidearms. Little to no bloom, great accuracy, great perks on the weapons in class. They have a one-second TTK. That's made up by its fire rate, applying flinch and not really having bloom or recoil, and it has ease of use not requiring the user to land 100% accuracy. I hope that you guys learned something. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I like all the hand cannon types. All of them have a place. Even though my spare rations has 54 range, it's still in my top 5 overall used PvP weapons because I enjoy it so much. I just bring it out on the smaller maps and I have fun with it. Its overall preference, and my personal overall preference on console, are the 140s. Ace and Ostringer specifically are way more consistent for me. But I would like to thank you for watching. Feel free to add any insight that you have. What is your favorite hand cannon RPM for console? Let's talk about it. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.